The following steps will help you to verify application discrepancies and understand how the Topcon area counters work. Before proceeding with a way in, way out test, you should ask these following questions and get the answers. Is the unit over applying? Is the unit under applying? Which area counter are you using? The coverage area counter or the treated area counter? If the unit is under applying, have you checked the pressurization hoses, checked for air leaks, verified ground speed, and verified calibration? If the unit is over applying, have you checked implement width, verified ground speed, and verified calibration? Does the product have a relatively consistent size? How did you verify the weight of the product used? How did you verify the treated area? After the questions have been answered, you would usually have your answers or a direction to proceed in solving the issue. Let's first start with explaining the very complicated area counting abilities of the X30 monitor. The job statistics mini view displays area worked, which is coverage area including all overlap. The boundary area displays the calculated area remaining unpainted within the field boundary, and the area remaining displays the calculated area remaining unpainted within the field boundary. In the center of your screen is the job area counters. We are displaying the treated area. The treated area for a tank has applied product based on the width of the boom and the distance traveled. Below that, we have the ASE savings. This is the calculated percentage of savings in an area of a sectional boom compared to the area that would have been applied if it were a full width boom. Down below that we have the average application rate for a tank within a field. This is the total product divided by the treated area. Down in the lower right corner we have the coverage area work. This displays the painted area excluding any overlap, the same as what the tractor coverage map displays. We won't talk about an implement area counter to run totals for the season or partial season. For a much more detailed explanation of the area counters of your X30, see the operator's manual and or PowerPoints on our Forgo website. In the above example, we tried to simulate seeding a field that had a considerable amount of potholes and would result in a fair bit of overlap. We used section control with a control mode setting of 97, which would give a fair bit of overlap, but not too much. In this field, we put product down on 72.85 acres, but covered 86.09. We also were seeding at a rate of 120 pounds per acre and ended up with 141.12 pounds per acre for the total field as an average. This was due to overlap from the potholes. This makes it look like we're over applying by 15% when in fact we're only over applying in the overlap areas. In the straight runs we are in fact putting down 120 pounds per acre. If you're questioning an application rate we came up with a couple different methods to verify that the unit is putting down the product that is requested in the same time taking the X30 out of the calculations. The first method will be a distance check. So there's a simple formula that you, you should remember. There's 43,560 square feet 
in an acre. So you divide your implement width into that. That'll give your distance you need to travel to cover one acre. Weigh in enough product to seed out a specific amount of acres. We only two acres, for example. Add an additional half acre worth of product. Seed for the distance calculated above. Two acres in our example would be 1146.4 feet on a 76 foot drill. Weigh the product remaining in the tank. You now know how much product was used to seed your short test and can calculate how much product was seeded per acre. For our example, we put down 250 pounds a week in the tank, seeded for two acres, 1146.4 feet. Subtract the weight remaining from the starting weight and divide the weight remaining by the two acres we seeded. So 250 pounds minus the 46 pounds that was remaining in the tank equals 204 divided by the two acres equals 102 pounds per acre. For an alternate method, we'll use some different formula. Implement width times the distance traveled divided by the square feet in an acre. Remember that was 43,560 square feet equals the area covered. Once we have our area covered, we can calculate the seeding rate. So if we use, for example, a 76 foot drill seeding wheat at 100 pounds per acre and travel 1,000 feet, so it's 76 times 1,000 divided by 43,560 equals 1.74 acres. Weigh in enough product to seed out a specific amount of acres. We will use two acres for our example. Add an additional half acres worth of product. Seed for the distance to use up the majority of the product without running out. Calculate the acre covered using the formula above. 1.74 acres for our example. Weigh the product remaining in the tank. You now know how much product was used to seed out your short test and can calculate how much product was seeded per acre. So for our example, we put 250 pounds of wheat in the tank, seeded for a thousand feet, emptied and weighed the tank, came up with 74.3 pounds for our test, subtract the weight remaining from the starting weight and divided the weight remaining by 1.74 acres we seeded. 250 divided minus 74.3 equals 175.7 divided by 1.74 equals 101 pounds per acre. After you, you have verified the actual seeding rate using the weigh in and weigh out procedure, you should compare the actual seeding rate with the rate displayed on the X30. If it's not correct, you'll need to start investigating. The Bergol system uses the following inputs. Ground speed, implement width, metering auger shaft speed, and a calibration factor. They use all these inputs to calculate the seeding rate displayed on the X30. If the unit is under applying, one of the inputs may be incorrect, but if the inputs all check out, then the problem is most likely pressurization. If you have less air pressure above the product in the tank than in the airstream, it'll put out less product. So you'll proceed to check for leaks, interconnect door problems, or possibly a downspout from a metering auger not being used is in the wrong airstream. If the unit is over, applying one of or more of the inputs would not be correct. Your inputs again are ground speed, usually a GPS source. 
implement width, and entered value in the X30. Shaft speed. If the shaft speed were a problem, most likely you'd only have a problem on one of the tanks, not all of them. Calibration factor. When we calibrate, we're figuring out how many pounds of product are pushed out of the metering circuit with one revolution of the auger. If you're unsure of the procedure for calibrating, please review the support information on the website and or your operator's manual and recalibrate your tank. Or finally, if there's too much overlap due to improper sequence timings, overlap, so on and such, you should make sure that your timings are correct so you're not overlapping too much product. To help you analyze where you may be overlapping too much product, reload a job on any given field and check the job report and view the job to see where you might be overlapping. Thank you.